Hi, James here. We're going to finish up by adding into a scene to make it into a multiplane scene. To do this, I'm going to use the compositing workspace. You'll notice over here I've only got these two panels because I've got rid of one of them. You can just get rid of one by pressing across, but for me, I just like having the two here. You can use the perspective mode here, which if you don't have it open, you can just click down here and select, select and it will appear as a tab up here. And go over here with your rotate view. You'll be able to rotate the view here. And that lets you sort of see the depth. Currently we have no depth because everything's on the same plane. So the idea is going to be to separate these planes so that there's some depth when you move the camera or the illusion of depth. First of all you want to take your, your sky and your sun and we're going to take these all the way back. Now you see I just selected these to unlock the other layers with the keyboard shortcut which with the new Animate 2 is Control shift alt o and that will lock all of the layers except for the ones that are selected. Now I'm going to use this icon up here to maintain the size. What this means is when you move it back on the Z axis it will keep the same size as when you drew it at the beginning. So hopefully when you've moved everything it will still look the same. You'll just have that illusion of depth when you move the camera. So over here we we'll probably want to zoom this out a little bit. We're going to want to move the sun and the sky back a considerable distance. If you think about it, normally when you're driving along, the hills move fairly fast, but the sun in the background barely moves. I'm going to move the sun and the sky together just because the sky is a gradient and it's going to be the same all the way across. If your sky is like a starry night or... You have other things there. You'll probably want to push your sun in front of your sky so that your sun moves at a different speed to your sky. And now you should just be able to move. Ah. Stuck both layers. I just nudged it so that I can see them here. And so that clearly is wrong because we want to select those. We want to maintain size, and now we want to move it. So now, if we look at our camera view, it looks exactly the same. But in this view over here, you can see it's gone all the way back. Now, next you're going to want to take back the distant hills. So, let's move that back. We don't want to move that too far back. Now we'll move the middle hill. And the front hill can stay as is. And now if you grab this rotate tool, you can see how we have this depth. So let's have a look in our camera tool. We can just pan across. And that looks good. So now we need to add a camera to the scene, which you simply do. You're going up to here, camera, you have a camera. Then you're gonna need a peg to move it. And you'll see here that it's automatically added onto the peg here. And the peg is what we're going to animate. So first of all, we need to extend our exposure on all of our layers. Using F5, after selecting all the layers to extend the exposure. 
So now on all 60 frames we have that exposure. So now I'm going to move the camera and we're probably going to start right here. I don't want to have the edge of the hill on it. Turn the animate button on. Go to the last frame. And that's it. You now have all the hills moving at different rates throughout your scene. And that's as simple as multiplane is. Obviously you might want to adjust these layers. Like here the sun's moving. You can see the sun is moving still a reasonable pace, so you might want to move the sun even further back. But you can see the hills are moving considerably faster than the sun. And so that's how you multiplane.